Welcome to Material Atomics. My name is Anastasia. Yeah, I'm Michael Shiloh. And today we're going to be talking about a material explanation for electromagnetism. In our last video, we talked about a material explanation for electricity. And today we're going to explain why an electric current causes a magnetic field. We introduced the idea of a very simplified circuit last time that has a single atom thick S-shelled wire, which is of course preposterous, but it allows us to get at the mechanics of what's happening at the surface of the atom. And what we propose is that following from our explanation for spin one half, which you can check out up here, the surface of the atom appears to be doing this very particular rotation where it involutes at the top, but in general, there's two rotational turns per involution. So there's a lot of rotational momentum in the shell of the atom. And what happens is if you arrange these atoms end on end, you can propagate that motion from one atom to the next throughout the conductor. So what happens is when we have this very simplified circuit where we're applying some momentum in the form of a potential to this circuit. What happens is that at the switch, before you connect the two leads to one another, there is a difference in the rotational momentum at one lead versus the other, say the negative terminal versus the positive terminal, which brings us to the point of what does this negative and positive thing mean? Well, if you take those leads and you twist them and turn them and look at them end on end, what you'll find is that the surfaces of those atoms, at least the conductive surfaces, and in this case it's the only surface since it's an S shell, they're actually rotating in opposite directions. One's moving right-handed and the other's moving left-handed. Because then when you put them together, all of a sudden they're commensurate with one another. So what happens is when there's more power in one side of the circuit versus the other, an imbalance, you have a voltage. And so all of this rotational momentum can slam into the next one and cause that chain of atoms to continue and this allows you to drive power at a distance. So, how does this lead to the production of magnetism? Our explanation for electricity is missing a piece. So far, we've only been talking about the surface of the atoms that are part of the wire, but the surface of the atoms is not the entirety of the atoms in our model. You also have these radial filaments that come out from each surface, and those radial filaments are taken from the radial distribution function of the electron, which says the electron that's in the outer shell of the atom can actually be found at any distance from the atom. So these thin projections are moving out in all directions from each atom that is in this wire. And so if you have them rotating around the axis of the wire, the shells are going to create the electric current but the filaments that are rotating are going to create this area of influence that is driven by the filamentary extensions of the atoms. And so if you have two single atom wires that are right next to each other and current is being carried in the exact same direction, their filaments will intermesh in a compatible way and they will be brought together. If you take one of those wires and you flip it so that current is running in the other direction, you'll have that the rotation of the other wire is in the opposite direction of your first current carrying wire, and that rotation is going to cause them to repel. Just to recap, the important thing here is that the surface of the atom isn't just the shell that we think of when we think of orbital diagrams. There's also this ignored piece of the puzzle, which is very important to our explanations, not only for this, but for gravity and for light as well because these filaments are what we believe are responsible for mediating those other phenomena at a distance. And just like those action at a distance phenomena, magnetism involves the filaments as well, and it has to do with the way that the surface of the atom is rotating in this spin one-half fashion. So while electricity and magnetism are the product of the motion of the surface of the atom, they're very different structural aspects of the atom that are involved. And so the key takeaways of this video are the following, that electricity is the product of shell-shell interactions, magnetism is filament-filament and filament-shell interactions, and that charge has to do with the orientation of motion in space. For our next video, we want to start talking about AC versus DC circuits, and in order to do that, we have to just consider one slight complication, which is that if we take this single atom wire and we curl it into a loop upon itself and make a coil out of it, 
then we have produced the most simple electromagnet imaginable because what we've done is we've aligned all the equatorial axes of each one of those atoms together such that the magnetic motion, which is of course at the equator of the column, all of that magnetic motion is synced up amongst the atoms that are now in this coil. And they can generate a new combined coherent magnetic field together, which is of course just the motion of the filaments in concert together. And so the use of this coil has all sorts of technological applications, the most simple of which is the direct current and alternating current generator. And we will pick up with those next time.